Thank you, Dr. Kim. I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Kirstead uh, to come up and say a few words, and then we'll open it up for some, uh, some questions and comments. Huh? Thank you. Well, thank you very much. It's a real, real pleasure to be here. Um, I'm really on board with anything any initiative man puts together, so I'm, I'm quite pleased here um, to be part of this. Um, you know, my um, goal has really been in science to uh, be part of something that betters the life of people who are afflicted with neurological disorders. And um, I have been working towards that end, quite clinically driven, really. Um, for, for my career, I have developed one treatment that's now in clinical testing and another one that's going to go in next, uh, probably in the summertime, and one in the, and the third one in the fall. Um, I've had to either build my own companies or partner with other companies to get those things into the clinic and raise the typically 10 to 20 million dollars it takes to get something up from the bench to the bedside. And so I have been quite driven in that path. And um, one of the tools that I stumbled across along the way were embryonic stem cells. And uh, even to this day, I don't really consider myself a stem cell scientist. I'm more of a spinal cord injury researcher who's using a, one tool. But I've learned over the um, years that uh, that tool is a heck of a lot more powerful than I had ever imagined it to be. And um, I have been working with human embryonic stem cells. Right now, they have the ability to be amplified into huge quantities, literally cubic meter quantities. We're, we're growing these things in for clinical trials. And um, it's really the, um, the only cell type now that we can do that huge production with, but the others are coming along quite well. And having been in that field and pushed towards clinical stuff, uh, and I have this, I want to balance that. I'm actually a basic researcher just with grand designs. <laughs> um, I've come to learn that it's a heck of a lot more complicated than I had ever imagined, and that embryonic stem cells are much more flawed than I had ever imagined. And I have come to a position where I've realized that uh, a great deal of research really needs to be done on the different stem cell lines. And uh, the parthenogenic lines are an extremely exciting area that needs to be explored and it needs to be funded because the potential is just so tremendous. So I applaud Anne and the um, trustees of the Bedford and the mayor for um, bringing everybody together and um, really tackling in the right way um, the problems that face the stem cell field. It's a very unique union of science and politics, religion and society. And it really does take um, a situation where all the stakeholders are at the table. You can't have one party preaching to the others. It doesn't work. And I'm talking about the scientists to the religious, the government to the scientists, all of those combinations. It simply does not work. So uh, bringing the stakeholders to the table is what's needed. And so I applaud this group for doing that. And uh, please, your pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. There's the question of space, which Lisa LaCour brought up, but also um, location of that space. How important, or how, honestly, how valuable is it to have that space located where, uh, you know, researchers that work in those labs actually live? Um, is, that, is that a major consideration? It's not a bad thing, but how, how important that is, is that to you if you were determining where to locate a facility? I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it's all a matter of, 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 of how easy the communication is, but you know one-on-one -on -one communication, so person-to-person, -person, is, is more effective than, than electronic. So, so I think it's important to be um, co-located as close as possible. So I think it's it's ideal in this sector here to, to be very close to, to a lot of brilliant scientists and that, that's, that's, that's hugely important. The other thing I think, and maybe Hans may have a comment on that, um, the cell therapies, if we're going to apply them, then maybe we have to have GMP, a, a good medical practice uh, uh, facilities to, to make these stem cells. And so, because you, if you're going to give people stem cells into the central nervous system and it's now lost to or into any tissue really um, 
it's, it's invasive and you want to make sure that you put your cells in there you're not transferring something that you would predict. So I guess GMP facilities, uh, certainly in the, in the near future, should, as we move towards clinical trials, can be very important. It's very expensive. But it may be one of the things that ought to be sort of put into this space here, uh, in some of them, because it could serve us a whole mm -hmm. and a lot of laboratories. Yeah. And I think if you think like that, uh, it could be a, a, an important, very important part. I'm interested in the workforce development or the, the potential of these fields in terms of um, um, jobs, uh, employment for people. And what do you see as being the future um, for, for that? I, I can speak to that a little bit. Having a, being in a state where $3 billion is just being poured onto the economy and uh, having taken part in the, um, the Senate pitch, if you will, in the unions and the corporate finance councils and the legislative analyst offices and all that type of work in order to get that bill passed, uh, I was pretty central and involved in all that stuff. And um, what I saw was the um, um, I got a feeling for how the industry sector is interacting with the, the academic sector in the field of stem cell research. When Bush came out with his policy in August 2001, um, three of the top ten major pharmaceutical companies stopped their stem cell programs and pushed it off into the small startup um, ventures. Um, and investors were very scared because a change in federal policy could wipe out their investment. Um, more recently, with uh, HRA 10 having been uh, successfully passed through some houses and then vetoed, uh, the confidence has gone up again. And so there's three new venture capital firms popping up right now with the stem cell focus in the United States. Um, the number of small companies that are being funded is going up tremendously. The biotech sector has never been stronger, and the stem cell subsector of that has is, gotten is very good. So I think what we're seeing is uh, an investor confidence, which means small startups, which means jobs. I, I want to recognize somebody who joined us today. Uh, Bob Culver uh, is the president of Mass Development. Um, that's the state's, uh, one of the state's uh, prime development finance uh, agencies. I think it is the most significant one in the state. Um, and I'm mentioning this. Well, first I want to thank Bob for being with us. Uh, this is a guy with a very busy schedule. Um, and so we're very pleased that you joined us today. But um, in addition to that, uh, I, I guess this is um, an example of how uh, we are in touch with the state, with, uh, with, with Bob and his agency, uh, with the idea that collaboratively forward to putting the pieces together, especially in terms of uh, uh, you know, finance on the public sector side to, uh, to make possible um, uh, the kind of development that we're talking about today. Uh, any, any other questions or comments? I'll, I'll add one, one yeah. other, other component to that. Um, if you ask a scientist how to build a, um, uh, an infrastructure for stem cell development, you're only going to get part of the answer. <laughs> and uh, that certainly goes for me too. You know, if you ask someone from the uh, investment side what they need and what they want, um, their answer is going to be very, very different. So a scientist will say, it's the science, it's the science, it's the science, it's this unique idea that I have or my colleague has. But uh, uh, venture capitalists, for instance, will say, you know, ideas are, are cheap, but what it really takes is a management team. If you do not have a proper management team, uh, the idea will go down. So I think that it's extre extremely important that um, somebody engage the um, business community so that you have educated CEOs. They're the hardest thing to find. It's much easier to find a good, strong scientific concept to back the company than it is to find a business leader to lead it. Nothing about that. So I think it's important that that community be engaged in this uh, uh, infrastructure. Thanks, Hans. I, I want.